Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Hey, Calvary, it's Pastor Ruben from the Parker campus, and here's your word for the day. How many of you love gifts? I think it's safe to say we all do, right? You see, gifts say a lot. It says someone had you in mind, somebody was thinking of you and wanted to give you something personal. In our devotion today, we're going to read about how God thought of us as He gave us something personal. Let's read about it in Matthew chapter 1, starting in verse 18. It says this, Now the birth of Jesus took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed uh, to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord spoken by the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Now, there's so much jam-packed into this passage, both the obedience of Mary and Joseph. But what I want to talk about today is how Jesus is the greatest gift ever. The angel told Mary, she will bear a son and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. You know, when we come into a life-changing relationship with Jesus by confessing our sins, uh, recognizing that we are sinners in need of a Savior, Jesus offers a beautiful gift of salvation, of forgiveness for our our sins and to save us from the penalty of sin for the wages of sin or the price of sin is death but the free gift of God is eternal life now that alone is a great gift just by itself but he offers more the angel quoted Isaiah when he said this they shall call him Emmanuel God with us God with us now shifts the power sin had over us because of Jesus we now have the power are you ready for this? We now have the power to resist sin in our lives, to resist the temptation. By reading and applying God's word to our lives, we will be filled with God's strength to say no to sin. Remember, three times Jesus said, for it is written when he was tempted by the devil himself. And in Luke, it says that the, de that the devil ended every temptation until an opportune time which means that the devil isn't going to stop. And neither should you, as you follow Jesus, continue to stay in his word. That is where we get our strength when we're truly living out what God or what the word of God says. Lastly, God with us saves us from the presence of sin. Now, we live in a fallen and sinful world, and we are sinners saved by the grace of God. So the presence of sin isn't gone, but we will recognize the sin in our life and the sin around us. And I love the way Paul said this in Romans 12 too. He said this, and I'm going to use the New Living Translation. He says, don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. You see, Jesus is the greatest gift ever because he is with us. And because he is with us, we have the victory over the penalty, the power, and the presence of sin in our lives. But Jesus' gift isn't a gift that we should keep to ourselves. He is a gift that we should share with everyone around us so that they too can experience that life-changing relationship with Him. So they too can experience the greatest gift ever. So they too can say, God is with us. Have a blessed day today.